Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Kirsten Jeffords, The Laughing Kookaburra, Murmuruk, Mrs. Mitabump, George Cardas, Jess Donaldson, Konstantin Valdor, Joya Vita, James Rule, Probs Not Josh, Izzy Aliberti, Ethan Morris, Deborah Mitchell, and Carad, Sarah and Michelle Poyani, Matthew McCorkle, Nikki Nelson Hicks, Vili Canelli, Sam Oliver, Tales Hunter. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. Special thanks to Imogen Cassidy. May you receive only the most minor hull damage. Rusty Quill presents Stella Firma. Um, look at you there. A proud clone, all grown up now. Right. do you know what today is, David? Today is Thursday. It's the final day of the Trexel Geisman Ten Steps to Sales Domination Program. (coughs) Remember back on day one, David? Me, yelling, you, also yelling, so young, the both of us, so innocent, so... Unable to imagine what would happen. That was now we're here. That was three weeks ago. Together. More haggard, certainly. What? We've been through a lot, sure. Mm. But together, we've grown. And you... That's fair. ...are about to become a fully-fledged salesperson. Oh, good. At the end of today, you will have a full and official sales qualification official Stella Firma Limited. Really? And that means a lot, David. It does. Everything in Stella Firma is done on awards, qualifications and grade point averages. Oh. And you'll start to see yourself step up in the world with something like this, David. Oh, right. Okay. Um, well, uh, great. Um, well, in which case, what, what, is the, what is the tenth lesson? The tenth lesson? Yeah. Closing. Of course, David. What else could it be? You've got them where you want them, but if you can't close, it's not worth a damn thing. Mm -hmm. Potentially, not even then. Okay. But what does that mean? Closing? Yes. Um, ending the deal. Sure, in a way. Anything else? Uh, making them sign the paper a bit. Absolutely, but how do you do that? Asking nicely. No, no, that doesn't seem like it would be the answer, David. Uh, Giving them what they want so that they want to sign the piece of paper. We've discussed that. That's a bad way to go. Uh, threats. Right. It's threats, David. You can be as nice as you want, but at the end, they've got to have a bit of pressure on them, David. So you've got to have a little threat. Now, I know we have, together, learned that direct hostility and malice is not always the way to go. But I still feel very strongly, David, that at that very delicate point, right at the end there, Uh you've got to threaten a little bit, however you want to do that, to really get people to come in. Because the thing people don't really want to do is commit on the dotted line. Right. They walk up to the precipice and they think, ah, do I want to do this? Was that schmoozing genuine? Oh, I don't actually think this is this person's last day alive. I think they're lying. And at that point, that's where you've got to threaten them to just seal the deal. Right. And you're saying that I'll get a qualification out of this at the end? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Right, well, that's uh, great. Yeah, let's get on with it. Okay. Let's get on with them threat and closing. Misplaced faith detected. Security alerted. Oh, actually, um, how did your schmoozing with Yinli go? It, uh, uh, it, uh, it didn't go amazingly well, David. I, I'm banned from a lot more places than I thought I was banned from. Oh. Because normally I'm crawling in a vent way. There's nobody at the door. They don't know I'm in there until it's too late and something's on fire. And then I'm being kicked out anyway, so I don't know. 
but going in the front door with a client on my arm? A lot of times it was, who the hell do you think you are? Get out. And that looked bad in front of the client. I got into a lot of fights, a lot of fights, right. and I won none of them. Did Yinli won any of them? Yinli really had my back. We got into a lot more places than we should have because of those powerful arms. And turns out, she did have a wheel. Oh, she could just run them down. Right. Run well, and punch. Good. Well, uh, good for her. Flesh wheel murder suspect list updated. Security alerted. So I am banned from even more places oh, now. Oh, oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, we had some fun. We had some drinks. I think Yin Lee was on side. But, uh, yeah, not not a 100% success. Okay. Well, you know, we'll, I guess take But it. I do 100% confess to having had a great time. Good. That's good to hear, Trexel. It's nice that you schmoozed properly instead of, you know, the veil of tears. I liked it. Veil of fun was better. It was a veil of fun. Veil of fun. It It was good. Okay. Well, anyway, so this is our our next brief, or our final brief for the the course. So, you know, after, on Monday, after the review, it will be... Fully-fledged salesperson. You'll you'll be be leading things, David. What? You'll be leading things. Really? A qualification comes with certain responsibilities. I'll be there, David. Don't you worry. You're not getting rid of me that way. Ah. But I'll be in the corner. The mentor. The aged one sitting in the corner, nodding along. Shaking my head suddenly because I disagree with something. Realising I misunderstood. Leaning back and nodding again. Okay. Yes. I taught him everything he knows. Well, that wasn't any shouting, so it's an improvement. Okay, well, our Initiating. brief is for Ethel Unction Yeams. Ethel Unction Yeams. Ethel Unction Yeams. That's, 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 a, good, that's a good name. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, her pronouns are she, her. Good. Um, she wants a planet built for the ongoing education and social erudition of young sentients who have quite frankly forgotten their manners. Oh. Um, she likes order, neatness, straight lines, folded sheets, please and thank you, respect for your elders, and clean hands. Right. She dislikes filth, mm-hmm. rot, Okay. speaking out of turn. Well, that's not... And that look you are giving me right now, young man. How did she know? How did she know? If she were an animal, she would be a noble swan. Big long neck. Her greatest strength is her sense of what is right. And her greatest weakness is other people's rudeness. Right, so this person is a real pain. Mm. You invite them round and they've got a problem with everything. Mm -hmm. This napkin isn't folded properly. This meat isn't at the proper temperature. This isn't a knife. This is driftwood you've carved the word why into. You know, just, just... Putting all of of their energy into nitpicking and finding problems where there aren't problems. Right. Oh, the toilet's overflowing, Trexel. Please call a plumber. Oh, I've got dysentery, Trexel. I think I'm dying. Oh, Trexel, Trexel, there's an out of control oil fire in your kitchen. Wah, wah, wah. You know? Dinner party watch list updated. Security alerted. I'm just trying to have a party, David. Right. And maybe I want the oil to be on fire. Do you ever think about that? Was the oil on fire? It was on fire, yes. What happened to the fire? Uh, it got out of control. And did that person die of dysentery? No, no, they died of fire. Ah, yes. Right. Um, rest in peace, I suppose. Yeah. So the thing is, when you're dealing with someone like this, David, mm-hmm. you need to really inoculate yourself against their nitpickery. Because it's very quickly easy to go from, OK, I'm dealing with this, to, OK, I'm hitting you until the struggling stops. Okay, right, and um, and that is closing something, but not the this deal. This is nothing to do with the sales domination plan, David. Oh, this is about simply getting through a meeting with somebody that's going to have a problem. Oh, your tie's the wrong length. Oh, look, those pleats are wrong. Shut up, mother! I'm not a boy anymore. I'm a big man. Physically, yes. Emotionally, no. And my pleats are my business. Right. Why didn't you say you loved me before you died? Um... Yikes. You just talked about pleats, and then one day you were gone. And what did you leave? A son who knew that you loved him? No. A son who knew that you disproved of his pleats. Ah. Oh, sure. You were respected, but you didn't have my respect. Okay. That's why father left. Have you considered therapy? A what a thing? A therapy. I don't know. Uh, what that is. Oh, right. Well, a, a, a therapy is... Um, well, Imogen has quite a few programs. It's when you sort of 
talk to her about what you're feeling and then she'll give you some exercises or ways of thinking about things and maybe to help. I'm going to allow you to take a moment to think about everything you know about me, David, and and everything I've ever said and done in your presence. And then I'm going to let you think about the question, is Trexel going to talk about his feelings to Imogen? Imogen votes no. Well, I am going to also think about what we talked about yesterday. And is this a 10 out of 10 kind of thing to do? Or a 1 to 3 kind of thing to do? It's it's, it's sub 5, David. It doesn't feel good. I'm feeling very hostile. I'm I'm feeling very defensive. And that defensiveness feels safe. Yes, I feel very safe in that place. Mm -hmm. But do I feel Mm -hmm. good? Mm Mm-hmm. No, I don't, I don't feel good, but I, I'm scared. I'm scared to, to try and change because maybe if I change, I won't like what I change into. So maybe I should just stay the same even though I'm still unhappy. But then you'll always be unhappy and you should probably give yourself the chance to be happy. I should give myself the chance to be happy. Yeah. Right. Imogen still votes no. And do you know what we just did there? What? We talked about your feelings. <gasps> you tricked me. Oh, wait, no. You no, tricked no, me. No, no. I oh, will no, not be tricked no, in this way. No, Give me back my feelings. Uh, 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 no, uh, I, I don't keep them anywhere. You uh, have your feelings. Uh, no, stop sucking on my nose. Uh, uh, that's uh, horrible. I think I got some feelings. It could be snot. Uh, 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 that's, uh, that's not nice. Uh, that's not nice. Uh, well, now, mm. oh, now you've got your feelings back. Um, Maybe we could... Uh, Get back to Ethel Unction ye. Oh yes, and the lesson. Closing the lesson. equaling threats. Yes. So we need to know what to threaten this person about. Now, we could obviously apply all of the other tactics that we have learnt about. Oh, uh, yes. Spying. Yes. Uh, lying. Yes. Pretending that you're going to die. All yes. of these things could be useful. But luckily, in this particular instance, right. we've got quite a few things from Ethel that she doesn't like that we can threaten her oh, about. So let's just let's just run through those things again, shall we? Right. So what does she like? She likes order. Yes. She likes neatness. Mm-hmm. She likes straight lines. Okay. Folded sheets. Okay. She likes pleases and thank yous. Mm-hmm. Uh, she likes respecting your elders. Sure. And she likes clean hands. So it turns out, David, that I am everything that she hates and fears. Mm. I am like a walking threat to this person. Okay. I walk into the room, I don't even have to say anything. They take one look and think, "Uh uh-oh, this person is a whirlwind of sadness and crooked lines. So you just need to use me, David. Okay. Like a weapon. Right. You need to pierce her heart with the sword point of me. Okay, now we just need to make sure that there she doesn't have a way to, you know, run away immediately. Oh, we could lock the doors. Oh, we could just... We... Imogen, for this next session, make sure that the exit door for the consultant is locked. Securing meeting room. None may escape our clutches. And there you go. All right, it was, it was that easy. It's always been an option, David. Oh. It's just normally people don't like it when the door locks behind them. Sure. It makes them... Oh, Hence, I suppose. I often have it when I have a party, you know, after the oil fire has been out. People go to the door, they try the handle. Oh, guess what? It's locked. And Trexel's already crawled through a vent, and he sealed that vent behind him. So we're stuck in here now. And I come back weeks later, and they've become so cross, they've just become skeletons. Oh, dear. Cleanup crew urgently rerouted. I don't know why people do it. Um, lack of food or... And or oxygen? Well, that's just a state of mind. Is it? Yes, I've been oxygen deprived myself. I've never become a skeleton. Look, look at my flesh. Look at my flesh. It's quite fleshy. Look at my nipples. Oh, why? Put them away. No, put them away. Put them away, Trexel. Trexel's nipple down. Put them away. Okay, okay. Friends don't make friends look at their nipples. Yes, that... Thank you. Ten out of ten. Thank you. What, three out of three? Nipples. Okay. All right. Yes, I I see what you've done there. So but how, how are you going to use me as a weapon? Well, as you said, maybe just engaging in light conversation. Do you think that would be enough? I think it might be. Should we run role it? Play? Let's do a roleplay. Okay. okay. Roleplay Holovision initiated. You are Ethel Unction Yeams. Right. I am Ethel Unction Yeams. Good afternoon, Ethel. Hello. Oh, aren't you a horrible, dirty little man? Oh, 
You, you stuck up tree branch. I'm gonna push you over and ruffle your hair. What? Look at this <gasps> piece of paper. Oh, no. I've not folded it in half, I folded it crosswise. Oh, good. These sheets have never been washed. I... They've become Ooh. oily with sweat. Oh, I don't like it. I'm going to have to leave. You can't try the door, Ethel. I am. Oh no, the door is locked. Wait, before you become a skeleton, what? Sign this piece of paper and I'll let you out. No, I shan't. Oh, oh, I've actually taken this duvet and I've turned it half inside out, then crumpled it up and put it in the bottom drawer. No, not the bottom drawer. My hands are filthy. You wouldn't dare. Ethel, isn't it your turn to speak? What? Guess what? I've interrupted you. No. I'm speaking out of turn, Ethel. How dare you? I am so very, very, very annoyed at all of this that is going on. Oh dear, I've had a heart attack and I've died. Ah, oh, that's the... Ah, too much then. Roleplay Holovision terminated. I think too much. That's the first step to becoming a skeleton. Mm. Yep, and I should know. Wait, what? Me? Really? Hmm? Are you... Are you a skeleton? How is that the conclusion you have reached? David, do you... Do you think I'm a skeleton? I don't know. Skin flaps detected. Clearly... Not a skeleton. Have you... have you been a skeleton? Are you an ex-skeleton? Evaluating cost-benefit of removing oxygen supply. No. Are you sure? Well, yes, I mean, sure. Could I source flesh at short notice? Yes, I could. Could I put it on a skeleton? Yes, I could. Could I do that whilst I was a skeleton? That's harder to say, David. Right. If I did do it, would I remember? Because the brain is also flesh. So if I was a skeleton and didn't have a brain, but then put flesh back on myself to make myself a person again, that would include a brain. So would I know if I'd have done it? Is that how people are born? I don't do know. Do babies come from skeletons that place flesh on themselves? I was extruded out of a tube. This is plausible then. I need to do some soul searching. Oh, you could do it while talking to Imogen and... Nope, okay, I see the look you're giving me. Try that one more time, David. I'm going to push my face through this table. That is a metal table. Let me get there on my own. Stop clucking like a big therapy-loving hen. Cluck, 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 CBT. Oh, so you have done this before? No. What, you, you, oh, look over there! It's what? a wall! Huh? Uh, what, no, yes, of course it's a wall. Evaluation complete. More trouble than it's worth. So Ethel Unction Yeams has become a skeleton because I've overdone it. Yes, so I think we might need to just... Maybe meter you, it a little pick bit. One pick um, one threat. Pick one threat, shall we? What's the biggest threat? If you're a person who likes order, neatness, straight lines, what's the what's the one thing that's going to really just screw you right up? A game of gravity ball. Expand on that. Well, you have the ball. Mm -hmm. No straight lines on a ball. No, no, it's all just spheres. Yep. And as well we know, the rules change every 3.5 seconds. That's true, that's true. There are between 1 and 3,000 players. Okay. Very unpredictable. Very unpredictable. A lot of people in there. Tricky to understand if even if people are playing or if they're just bystanders. Client room is cavernous, but is it that cavernous? I don't think we want to find out. No. Except we do in this situation. Um, also, covered in mud. Everybody's just covered in mud. Slipping about in mud. You know what? I think we can... I can definitely get that room. Half filled with mud the moment we go in. Okay. We walk in, we deploy the mud. We chuck a ball in the middle and we say, Ethel, it's time to play. And we just start playing. You can't avoid a game of Gravity Ball. If it's happening around you, you're a player. Yeah. You either play or you die. Well, you don't even have top where, ah, hang on a minute. Oh, what if they, what if she refuses? And then dies. And then That's dies. The problem. Okay, faux Gravity Ball. You either play or or it doesn't work, but we really hope that you play. Okay, okay. Because you think that if you don't, you might die, which is in itself a bit of a threat. And if, maybe, we have faux gravity ball, although it won't work, we can just threaten to keep doing it until she signs. Yes, there's mud splatter, we're, we're ruffling up our clothes, we're kicking in curves. Okay, perfect. I think you're there, David. It's time for you to get your diploma from Ooh. the Trexel Geisman's 10 Steps to Sales Domination Plan. Yes, okay, right. Official telephone diploma? Have you got you your mortarboard? Oh, oh, um, oh uh, in the drawer. Yeah, here we go. Have you got your gown? Uh, oh, I'll just use the bed sheets. Have you got your special educational whistle? Um, um... Got all the things you confiscated from me and put in the hate drawer. I do. Well, give them all to me. It's part of the ceremony. Is it? It, it, it is. 
fine. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Just take the draw. <laughs> yeah. Take the draw. It's all for Jexel. Okay. I present to you, right, your diploma. Okay. Thank you. This is... This is a... You're welcome. This is a napkin. I apologise, what? This is a napkin from the Astral Bar. Nope. It has Astral Bar written on it. I don't. That's that's. There the, is a flaxen whisk stain here. That's a watermark. That's that's the people who print it. No, it, it's been scrawled. That's Astral Bar printers. You, this is in pencil. You've not even used a pen. That That's that's calligraphy. Also, my name is misspelled. What is it? Your name is misspelled. Trexel does not have a Y in it. Oh, no. This is... Is this it? You cannot have been expecting more. It, yes, that that that's it. It has been three weeks. Three full weeks of this. And you knew this is what it ended in. You told me I would become a fully qualified salesperson with a diploma, which would have been important, which may have kept me from being recycled for like maybe just a little bit. Maybe would have helped me in the long term, but no, I'm just here with a dirty napkin and broken dreams. David, David, I'm going to level with you because from the start to now, we've obviously gone through a lot and I don't think it would be fair if I was to lie to you. Right. The sales course that you've completed. Yes. Is not what you would call an accredited or official course. So, so this when you said it was Trexel Geisman's course, you literally meant it's, it's absolutely just, mine. Just, completely just designed course. by me, not known or available to the wider so, Stella Firma Limited. Stella Firma doesn't even know about this. Not really. I think Hartro knows, but I don't think she cares. So it, it's not. It's it's a good course, David. I think I think you find it's a good course. You've learned a lot. You've grown. You know how to do this, and, and and you can really do sales now. I've seen you. You can do sales. But if you were to to take it to anyone and, and show them, they might oh, I don't know laugh in your face and, and ask you to leave. So fine, Drexel. Fine. I I don't. But know. that's that's okay, right? I, I faithful David always goes with the flow. Faithful David has no choice. I honestly don't know what I expected. And this basically just meets my expectations. Well, that's great to hear. So how about we play a nice fun game of Gravity Ball with Ethel? It's time to go. Let's go. It's sports o'clock, Ethel. Activate the mud flumes. Stella Firma is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill Limited and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. It was created by Tim Meredith and Ben Meredith and produced by Katie Seaton with executive producer Alexander J. Newell. In today's episode, Imogen was played by Imogen Harris. David Seven was played by Ben Meredith. Trexel Geisman was played by Tim Meredith. The episode was edited by Maddie Searle and Alexander J. Newell with music by Samuel D.F. Jones and artwork by Anna Kakan. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Discord server, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, join our Reddit community on r slash RustyQuill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at RustyQuill.com. May the board preserve and keep you.